Suppose we want to find the determinant of this 3x3 three three matrix. There are three primary strategies we could use to find the determinant. I'm going to show you how to find the determinant of this matrix using each of those three strategies, and then I'll show you one more example before we go. This video has chapters, so you can skip around as you please. We're going to begin by finding the determinant of this matrix with the cofactor definition of the determinant. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson going over this definition. But here that definition is for your reference. If A is an n by n matrix, then the number obtained by multiplying the entries in any row or column by their corresponding cofactors and adding the resulting products is the determinant of the matrix. Of course, this doesn't mean anything if you don't know what a cofactor is, but if you don't, then you'll kind of see as we go through this example. So the determinant of A, which is sometimes notated like this, we can evaluate this with a cofactor expansion. Now, we do these expansions along any row that we like or any column that we like. No matter which we pick, the answer will be the same, but generally we want to pick a row or column with the most zeros. So in this case, row 1 is a fine choice. Then each term in the cofactor expansion consists of one entry from the chosen row, you can see that, two, 0, 1, being multiplied by a determinant. In this first term, for example, with that entry 2 from the first row, we eliminate the row and column that entry is in, and then it's going to be multiplied by the determinant of the remaining submatrix. You can see that. That's where this determinant comes from. Then we move on to the next term in the row, which is 0, and again eliminate its row and column and take the determinant of the remaining submatrix. 4, negative 1, 3, negative 2. Hopefully you can see where that determinant is coming from. Also notice we have a negative thrown in there. That's because this entry is in row 1 and column 2. And if you add those numbers together, you get an odd number. Anytime that's the case, we need to include a negative factor. The first term, for example, was in row 1, column 1, which adds to an even number. So we didn't have a negative factor there. Finally, the last term in the cofactor expansion, we have this last entry from the row, 1 multiplied by the determinant of this remaining submatrix, which you can see there. And of course, this is in row 1, column 3. That adds to 4, an even number, so we don't have to include a negative factor. You may notice that those signs alternate. No negative factor, negative factor, no negative factor, and so on. The pattern would continue if we had a larger matrix. And at this point, it's easy to finish the computation as long as you know how to find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. We have 2 multiplied by this determinant. The determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix is negative 3 times negative 2, which is positive 6, minus 5 times negative 1, so minus negative 5. Then we have 0 times that determinant, so that term is just 0. We won't worry about that. And then for this one, we have 1 multiplied by this determinant, which is 4 times 5, that's 20, minus negative 3 times 3, so minus negative 9. Doing the math, this turns out to be 51. So that's the determinant of the matrix A, and now we'll get this determinant a different way. I would say that typically the quickest way to find the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix is to use this diagonal trick. All we have to do is multiply the entries on the rightward arrows that you see here in this diagram and add them together, and then subtract the products of the entries on these leftward arrows in red. Also in this diagram, note that this is the 3x3 three three matrix, and then these two extra columns are just the first two columns rewritten. And we just do that so that we can show these diagonals easily. So for example, with our matrix A, the same one as before, the determinant, it's notated like this, and we can find this determinant using the diagonal trick by first rewriting the first two columns to the right of the matrix. This just helps us organize our thoughts. And what we're going to do is calculate the products of these rightward diagonals and add them together. And then we will subtract the products of these leftward diagonals. So beginning this computation, we have 2 times negative 3 times negative 2, which is positive 12. 
And then the next one is 0 times negative 1 times 3, which is 0. And then 1 times 4 times 5, which is 20. Now we're going to subtract and do the same thing with these leftward diagonals. So 1 times negative 3 times 3, that's negative 9. 2 times negative 1 times 5, that's negative 10. And then 0 times 4 times negative 2, of course, that is 0. So this ends up being 12 plus 20, and then minus negative 19. So 12 plus 20 plus 19. And this is indeed equal to 51, just as we had before. Finally, the last method to find the determinant is using row operations. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson going over this in detail. It's perhaps the most complicated one, but in general, this is probably the method I most prefer for larger matrices, because this will work for a matrix of any size. So the idea is to find the determinant of our matrix, what we'll do is perform row operations to get it into a triangular form, and the determinant of a triangular matrix is just the product of the diagonal entries, so that's easy to find. And then we just have to know how the determinant of our original matrix relates to the row reduced one that we have found. And these are the rules telling us how that works. So when we perform row operations on our matrix, here's how the determinant is affected. If we multiply a row or column by a scalar, then the determinant is hit by that same scalar. If we swap two rows or columns, the determinant is hit by a negative factor. And if we add a multiple of one row or column to another, the determinant actually doesn't change. Here you can see just a general example of these things with three by three matrices, but let's go ahead and try this on our matrix A. So here for our matrix A, I'll say the determinant of A equals, here's the notation, and then I know that I can add a multiple of one row to another without changing the determinant, so the equality would be preserved. So what I'll do is subtract two copies of row one from row two. That way this four becomes a zero. So four minus two times two gives us that zero, Negative 3 minus 2 times 0 is just negative 3. And negative 1 minus 2 times 1 is negative 3. Again, we're performing row operations on this matrix and just trying to get it into the nicer triangular form whose determinant is easy to calculate. Next, I want to turn this 3 into a 0. So I'll subtract 3 halves row 1 from row 3. Again, this does not change the determinant, so we still just have that equation. Quality. Now 3 minus 3 halves times 2 is 0. 5 minus 3 halves times 0 is 5. And negative 2, which is negative 4 halves, minus 3 halves times 1 is negative 7 halves. Note, at this step, it would be pretty easy to just find the determinant now using a cofactor expansion along the first column, because only one term would be non-zero. But let's continue with our row operations. The next thing we'll do is take a factor of negative 3 out of this second row. To do that, we know we just have to put that negative 3 factor outside of the determinant. So we can just pull that out, and now this row is 0, 1, 1. Finally, to get this into triangular form, we can subtract 5 times row 2 from row 3. 5 minus 5 times 1 is 0. And negative 7 halves minus 5 times 1 is negative 7 halves minus 10 halves, which is negative 17 halves. Now this is in upper triangular form, so its determinant is found by just multiplying along the diagonal. So now we can find the determinant easily. The determinant of our matrix A is equal to negative 3 times this determinant, which is just the product along the diagonal. So negative 3 times 2 times 1 times negative 17 halves. The 2 and the half cancel out, and the negatives also cancel out. So it's just 3 times 17, which of course is 51. Here is another 3 by 3 matrix A. You can try finding the determinant of this on your own. Why don't you try all three methods, but maybe begin with the method that you think would be easiest. I'll show you how I would do it now. 
In this case, since the first column has two zeros, this would probably be easiest to evaluate using a cofactor expansion along that first column. Hence, we would have that first entry, negative 4, multiplied by the determinant of that submatrix. 8 times 2 is 16, minus 5 times 9, that's minus 45. The other two terms in the cofactor expansion would be 0, so this is the determinant. 16 minus 45 is negative 29, so the determinant is negative 4 times negative 29, or positive 116. If you try the other two methods we went over, using row operations and using the diagonal trick, you should get this this same determinant. Notice for row operations, you'd only have to perform one, subtracting a suitable multiple of row 2 from row 3 to eliminate that 5, and then you could just compute the product along the diagonal of your new matrix to get the determinant. And so that's how to find the determinant of a 3x3 matrix. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to certain videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in these videos. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, squeaky, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Mama. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.